This is an unboxing of the new Galaxy S21, where we find out what comes included in the box. And I'll tell you right now, it's not looking good. This is the box in comparison to last year's S20 Plus. You can see it's, uh, it's a lot thinner. And here's a comparison with the new iPhone 12 Pro. It's about the same size. So it looks like we may be missing a few things with the S21. Last interesting thing I noticed uh, is this box is printed using soy ink. I thought that was uh, kind of neat. I didn't know you could print using soy ink, but there you go. Opening it up here, and we are immediately greeted with the S21 itself and some accessories. So we'll set this off to the side. It looks like we are in fact missing the power adapter. So last year you got a really nice 25 watt super fast charging power adapter, USB type C. This year is completely gone. Instead you have this accessory pouch, which includes some quick reference guides, um, a little pamphlet advertising the phone you just bought in case you weren't convinced enough, and some terms and conditions. Looks like you also get a cable here. This is a USB type C to USB type C charging cable. You'll use this to charge your phone with, um, well, I, you either have to go out and buy one of these things now, or I guess, but no one's gonna have a USB type C power adapter. I don't know, I think this is kind of a weird approach because most people I feel like have these guys, the USB type A power adapters, as opposed to a USB type C power adapter. Um, but either way, I guess going forward in the future, you will have this nice USB-C cable and uh, that's, that's it. That's actually everything in the box. Let's get this stuff out of the way and take a closer look at the S21 itself. It is covered in protective plastic. Looks like you don't actually get a pre-installed screen protector here. There's a little pull tab indicating you actually pull on the screen and yeah, there's no protective screen protector. So on last year's S20 Plus, you can actually see some scratches and a little cutout on the camera. That's because it came with a screen protector pre-installed. I actually really liked that. Out of the box, you're a little bit more protected. Like it saved me from all of those scratches, which is really nice. Uh, this year, you gotta be more careful. That's not included, or you gotta spend extra on the screen protector. So it really feels like to me, Samsung is trying to get you to spend more with the S21. On the back, we do have another little protective piece here, and we have protective layer over the triple camera setup as well. And wow, this device looks awesome. I absolutely love the matte finish, and I love the camera bump. I mean, I think it just looks so sleek, especially in comparison to last year's S20. So this is the S20 Plus, um, but yeah, wow, look at that. I absolutely love the design. It is a plastic back, but honestly, you know, I thought this would be a big deal. To me, it's actually not right now. It feels great. It's got a great texture. I love the finish on it. And it makes the phone a little bit lighter, makes the phone a little bit more durable. I'm okay with it. I will say I'm okay with a plastic back on a phone. I think it's a reasonable material and it gets the job done. Now that I have the device set up, let's take a look at some of the hardware features of the S21. And I think the one most people are talking about, not because it's new, but because of how it looks. And that's the camera array on the back. So it's actually the same camera sensors this year. You have the same 12 megapixel ultra wide angle camera, the same 12 megapixel wide angle camera, and the same 64 megapixel telephoto camera. That's three times zoom. But because of how this system looks, it's just a really nice design change. You can see you have the metal from the rails of the device kind of curve into the metal housing for the camera array on the back. I think it's an excellent design. It looks much better than the fat camera bump Samsung sort of slapped in the top left-hand corner of last year's S20 devices. So kind of a new design and props to Samsung. You do of course have the plastic back on the S21, but if you opt for the bigger device, if you got the S21 Plus, uh, you would still have that glass back. On the right-hand side of the device, you'll find your power button and volume rocker. On the top, you won't find anything besides some microphones, which is kind of interesting because on last year's model, the top is where the SIM card tray actually was. On the left-hand side, you don't have anything besides some antenna bands. And on the bottom, this is where you have your SIM card tray, your USB-C charging port, and your speaker. And one thing that's a little disappointing for a lot of Samsung fans this year is this device no longer has expandable storage. 
The SIM card tray is literally just a SIM card tray. There's no option for a micro SD card for that expandable storage. So if you're purchasing this device, you wanna make sure you get a device that has enough storage to meet your needs because there's no option to add more later. Finally, on the front of the phone, you have a 10 megapixel selfie camera, as well as a second generation underneath the screen fingerprint reader. And I will say this does tend to work a little bit better than last year's model. We can do a side-by-side -side test here. This is unscientific, uh, but just for fun, if we turn both devices on, three, two, one, go. Yeah, it looks like uh, that was an authentication code, but it looks like it was faster on the S21. So if we do that again, again, three, two, one, one go yeah i mean the amount of contact time my thumb is having with the sensor i would say is about the same but the s21 does appear to read the fingerprint and unlock faster in comparison with last year's s20 so i think that is a really nice improvement and another difference is the display along with lacking a pre-installed screen protector the display on the galaxy s21 is only 1080p but it does come at 120 hertz out of the box. This makes the animations feel faster, fluid, and more responsive, and it is a noticeable improvement. And you can check this if you go into settings, display, you can see motion smoothness is set to adaptive. This will automatically adjust the display refresh rate, I believe from 40 hertz to 120 hertz, depending on the content you're viewing. This helps optimize battery life and giving you the best performance. With last year's S20, it was 1080p at 60 hertz out of the box, and you could choose to either up it to 1440p at 60 hertz or opt for 1080p at 120 hertz. And I think most people opted for the 120 hertz option just because it does make the device feel super smooth, even if it is at 1080p. And honestly, it is disappointing. Samsung kind of downgraded this device here, but the display still looks fine. It's OLED, it's sharp, it's vibrant. I think you're honestly really gonna like it and probably not notice that much of a difference besides the faster refresh rate, which is much more noticeable. And one of the final big differences with the S21 is the Snapdragon 888 processor. This enables great image processing from the cameras. Samsung has refined their HDR modes and better video quality and performance, as well as better video stabilization. And most importantly to me, as someone who tests out cellular connectivity, it comes with the X60 modem. This enables some of the fastest 5G performance we've seen to date, and I'm super excited to check it out. If you're interested, get subscribed to stay tuned for that video. Otherwise, that is basically it. Oh, one more thing. You actually do get a Samsung smart tag included in the box if you pre-order from samsung.com. Either way, that is actually it. That is what comes in the box with the Samsung Galaxy S21. I'm curious, what do you guys think of this device? Let me know with a comment down below. I'm Stetson. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.